Hello students, this is the beginning of the Age of Religious Wars, and so we're going to first start talking about um, politics, religion, and war. In 1559, France and Spain signed the Treaty of Cateau Cambrésis, which ended the long conflict known as the Habsburg Valois Wars. Now Spain was the victor. France was exhausted. The struggle took everything out of them, but they had to acknowledge Spanish dominance in Italy, where much of the wars, or many of the wars, had been fought. Spanish governors ruled in Sicily, Naples, and Milan, and Spanish influence was strong in the Papal States and Tuscany. The Treaty of Cato Cambrisi ended an era of dynastic wars and initiated a period of conflicts in which politics and religion played the dominant roles. Governments used religious faiths to persuade people to acquiesce to things like heavier taxation. Religious differences served as the motivating force for ordinary people to participate in wars, which is kind of ironic, and religious passions conditioned the mindsets of all elements of European society. Wars of the late 16th century differed considerably from earlier wars. 16th and 17th century armies were bigger than medieval ones. Some forces numbered as many as 50,000 men. Because large armies were expensive, governments had to reorganize their administrations to finance these armies. The use of gunpowder um, and that's what I have pictured there. The use of gunpowder altered both the nature of war and popular attitudes toward war. Guns and cannon killed and wounded from a distance indiscriminately. Writers scorned gunpowder as a coward's weapon that allowed a common soldier to kill a gentleman. Gunpowder weakened the notion uh, common during the Hundred Years' War, that warfare was an, an, uh, a noble experience. At the same time, governments utilized propaganda, pulpits, and the printing press to arouse public opinion and also um, get their citizens to support the wars. Now late 16th century conflicts fundamentally tested the medieval ideal of a unified Christian society governed by one political ruler, the emperor, to whom all rulers were, were theoretically subordinate, and one church to which all people belonged. The Protestant Reformation had killed this ideal, but few people recognized it as dead. Catholics continued to believe that Calvinists and Lutherans could be reconverted. Protestants persisted in thinking that the Roman Church should be destroyed. Most people believed that a state could survive only if its members shared the same faith. Catholics and Protestants alike feared people of the other faith living in their midst and the settlement finally achieved in 1648, known as the Peace of Westphalia, signaled the end of the medieval ideal. Now we're going to start by looking at the origins of difficulties in France. In the first half of the 16th century, France continued the recovery begun under Louis XI. The population losses caused by the plague and the disorders accompanying the Hundred Years' War had created such a labor shortage that serfdom virtually disappeared. 
cash rents replaced feudal rents and servile obligations this development clearly benefited the peasantry meanwhile the declining buying power of money hurt the nobility the increase in france's population in the late fifteenth and sixteenth centuries brought new lands under cultivation but the division of property among sons meant that most peasant holdings were very small domestic and foreign trade picked up mercantile centers such as rouen and lyon expanded and in fifteen seventeen a new port city was founded at le havre the charming and cultivated francis i who was pictured in the beginning of this presentation and his athletic emotional son henry the second governed through a small efficient council great nobles held authority in provinces such as uh, governors but paris appointed officials continued to exercise actual fiscal and judicial responsibility in 1539 francis issued an ordinance that placed the whole of france under the jurisdiction of the royal law courts and made french the language of those courts this act had a powerful centralizing impact the taille which was a tax on land provided what strength the monarchy had supported a, a strong standing army the problem was that the tax base was too narrow for francis's extravagant promotion of the arts and ambitious foreign policy the habsburg valois wars waged intermittently through the first half of the sixteenth century also cost more than the government could afford financing the wars posed problems in addition to the practices of increasing taxes and engaging in heavy borrowing francis the first tried two new devices to raise revenue first was the sale of public offices and a treaty with the papacy the former proved to be only a temporary source of money the offices sold tended to become hereditary within a family and once a man bought an office he and his heirs were tax exempt the sale of public offices thus created a tax exempt class called the quote nobility of the robe which held positions beyond the jurisdiction of the crown the treaty with the papacy was the concordat of bologna and in this treaty francis agreed to recognize the supremacy of the papacy over a universal council in return the french crown gained the right to appoint all french bishops and abbots this understanding gave the monarchy a rich supplement of money and offices and a power over the church that lasted until the french revolution of 1789 the concordat of bologna helps explain why france did not later become protestant in effect it established catholicism as the state religion because french rulers possessed control over appointments and had a vested financial interest in catholicism they had no need to revolt against rome however the concordat of bologna perpetuated disorders within the church um, within specifically the french church church offices were used primarily to pay and reward civil servants churchmen in france as elsewhere were promoted to the hierarchy not because they possessed any special spiritual qualifications but because they had rendered services to the state and it was these types of things that provided luther and calvin an audience a very receptive audience that listened to their teachings luther's tracts first appeared in france in 1518 and his ideas attracted attention after the publication of calvin's institutes in 1536 sizable numbers of french people were attracted to the reformed religion as calvinism was called because calvin wrote in french rather than latin his ideas gained wide circulation 
initially Calvinism drew converts from among reform-minded members of the Catholic clergy. Uh, you are also going to see converts from the middle classes and also some artisan groups. Most Calvinists lived in major cities like Paris, Lyon, and Grenoble. Oops, there was some technical difficulty there. Um, let's look at the French monarchy. The feebleness of the French monarchy was the seed from which the weeds of civil violence sprang. Henry II had three weak sons who occupied the throne, and they were poor leaders. Francis II died after 17 months. Charles IX succeeded at the age of 10 and was dominated by his mother, Catherine de' Medici. The intelligent, cultivated, and erratic Henry III followed his brother Charles on the French throne, and he divided much of his attention between his male favorites and frantic acts of repentance. From 1560 to her death in 1589, Catherine genuinely wanted civil and religious peace so long as her sons controlled the government but she had no consistent religious policy and her actions were guided by political motives the french nobility took advantage of this uh, weakness of the monarchy and in the second half of the 16th century between two-fifths and one half of the nobility at one time or another became calvinist just as German princes in the Holy Roman Empire had adopted Lutheranism as a means of opposition to Charles V, French nobles frequently adopted the Reformed religion as a religious cloak for their independence. No one believed that peoples of different faiths could coexist peacefully within the same territory. The Reformation thus led to a resurgence of feudal disorder. Among the upper classes, the Catholic-Calvinist conflict was the surface issue, but the fundamental object of the struggle was power. At lower social levels, however, religious concerns were paramount. Um, both Calvinists and Catholics believed that the other's books, services, and ministries polluted the community preachers incited violence and ceremonies such as baptisms marriages and funerals actually triggered it a savage catholic attack on calvinists in paris on august 24th 1572 followed the usual pattern this particular incident is called the saint bartholomew's day massacre the occasion was a religious ceremony it was the marriage of the king's sister margaret of valois to the protestant henry of navarre and this was intended to help reconcile Catholics and Huguenots, as French Calvinists were called. Among the many Calvinists present for the wedding festivities was Admiral, Admiral Gaspard de Coligny, head of one of the great noble families of France and the leader of the Huguenot party. Coligny had recently replaced Catherine de' Medici in influence over the young King Charles the Ninth, and when the night before the wedding, the leader of the Catholic aristocracy, Henry of Guise, had Coligny attacked, rioting and slaughter followed. The Huguenot gentry in Paris was massacred, and religious violence spread to the provinces. Between August 25th and October 3rd, about 12,000 Huguenots perished in those cities of Lyon, Paris, Orléans. The contradictory orders of Charles the Ninth worsened the situation. So the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre led to a led to fighting called the War of the Three Henrys. And I'll tell you more about the War of the Three Henrys when oh, I see you again.